That was my. I'll wait like th 30 more seconds and then I'll start. Did you see my brother? Good evening, everyone. I'm Susan Fraze, this year's elementary school um, council chair, and we are really excited to have everybody on. We have a hefty agenda, but it's really exciting. We have lots of staff coming to talk about their programs, some new staff members, as well as we have committee members coming on. Along with me, we have Amy Howard we, as our secretary, Emily Stone as our vice chair, and Kelly uh, and Shelly, um, as well, Closa as our treasurer and wonderful gray chairs and many, many committee members that are ready to serve and help you. So we are available and excited to get the year started. I'm gonna send it over to Rakia. We have some very special guests, Ms. Adams. Good evening, everyone. We're so excited to have you all here. But most importantly, I'm very thrilled to have the evening. Three of our fifth grade student council representatives meet Jack here this evening to talk to us a little bit more about what's happening with student council this year. Take it away. Good evening. My name is Blake Lander, a fifth grade student and a proud student council member. Sure, you're unmuted. Hi everyone, my name is Mia Ramirez and it is an honor to speak to you tonight. Hi, my name is Jack Brady and we are here to share with you a bit about this, this year's Student Council. Student Council is a student committee made up of fifth graders who are eager to dedicate their time and interpersonal skills toward elementary school and the Bronxville Bronx. Ms. Englehart is our committee's lead teacher who works toward including all members in the morning announcements, B3 assemblies, our monthly school themes, and of course, elementary school council meetings. One initiative that each student council leads is the elementary school's monthly themes. Each month, the teachers and students are asked to have conversations around an important quality or value that the Bronxville Elementary considers important to our school community. For September, our school theme is community. Classes submitted their big three ideas about building and fostering a peaceful and productive school and class community. These ideas are being shared on the morning announcements for the entire school to hear. While classes came up with many different big threes within their rooms, such as bravery, belonging, acceptance, kindness, perseverance, and friendship, we noticed a common theme. Our most common big threes include our B3, respect, responsibility, and safety. Our school theme for October will be courage. Student Council will share ways that teachers and students can have conversations about what courage looks like and why it is important to show courage. Also in October, Student Council will help organize the Memorial Day logo contest. This will be the committee's first opportunity to lead beyond our school theme. Shortly after, Student Council will facilitate our school's annual food drive for Feeding Westchester, which ties in with our monthly theme of gratitude. And in December, the committee will lead a drive for the Marine Corps Toys for Tots. This program provides gifts to disadvantaged children in the U.S. Our gifts will serve local communities. School themes include community, courage, gratitude, generosity, perseverance, 
empathy, innovation, engage, citizenship, friendship, and leadership. And their overall goal is to include everyone. I chose student council because I am responsible and organized, which are important qualities when you're in a leadership role. I chose student council because I care about important things and I want to be a part of change. I chose student council because I, I love the feeling of accomplishing something that I've put my heart into. Thank you for allowing us to be part of the meeting. I just wanted to say how thankful we are. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy your evening. Great job, boys and girls. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Y'all were amazing. <laughs> Thank you for Real... asking us to join. Like, Real well, professionals. Yes. yes. Done. All stars. Nice Beautiful job. Manners, respectful, kind. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what is it done yeah so you can leave the meeting now thank you bye, thank you. bye. Good night, boys and girls oh yeah that's yeah. my brother <laughs> my brother nice job so up next we have dr kelly i can't believe i have to follow that um, <laughs> that's a complete setup but welcome back, everybody. It's so good to see all of you. I'm Rachel Kelly. I'm your superintendent. And I wanted to just take a few moments and share some remarks with all of you. Um, it's great to see so many familiar faces here this evening. Uh, what was particularly joyful was watching all of the students and so many of the parents on the fields for the first day of school. It was the best way to begin the school year together. I wanted to take a few moments and address um, the decodable texts in our second grade. Specifically, there is one series out of the 66 series um, that is used in second grade. Decodable texts are used to reinforce a phonics rule that's taught to the whole class. And it's for students that might need more practice in that specific phonics rule. The series that's been brought up um, in terms of questioning its age appropriateness reinforces the controlled R rule. As many of you know, both the school board and the leadership team have made concerted efforts to improve our communication. And that's in all areas, including curriculum. The board many uh, years ago, or a handful of years ago, created a subcommittee called a strategy and curriculum subcommittee. And there are three board members on there annually. And the leadership team brings curriculum to them that they think may have the potential to be controversial or that may raise questions or concerns. So this particular series was reviewed by the subcommittee last June. And the decision was made to allow the series and to let parents know though ahead of time so that they can let us know if they don't want their children to read this particular series and that we would provide an alternative. This is a process we've utilized in the past in other grades throughout the district. And I acknowledge that this may have been the very first time we've sent such a letter to parents of our younger children, and therefore may not have been as clear as we could have been in that letter. Nonetheless, we have received a range of feedback from parents as a result of this letter that went to second grade parents this past Friday. Range of responses that include parents expressing their fine with their children reading this particular series, as well as parents sharing that they prefer their child not read this series. Both are respected. I do want to emphasize, we all want you to feel comfortable sending your children to school. So please don't hesitate to reach out to your child's teacher or any one of us to let us know if you prefer your child have an alternative series to reinforce the controlled R phonics rule. And, and if any of you prefer to speak with me directly, please know I'm always available and I am happy to do so. 
Last item I'd like to cover this evening is in regard to our Bronxville Promise. The faculty, the leadership team, and the board have spent a considerable amount of time listening to the community input and made some refinements to our current promise language. I've shared those edits with the full community, and I encourage you to read through them and share your feedback through the Google survey form. The links were sent out through the board summary after our last board meeting. The principal's message, our Bronco Beat, and, as, and can be found on our website under both the Bronxville Promise tab, as well as the Belonging in Bronxville tab. Thank you. I look forward to seeing all of you at back to school night, if not before. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. It's always great to have feedback from you and communication. We are thankful for that. Next up is Ms. Sarah Kinney, our board representative for our school. Hi, thanks so much. Hi, Susan. Uh, I want to thank you for all you're doing for the elementary school and your volunteerism, as well as all the elementary school PTA volunteers. Um, we greatly appreciate all that you do for our school. For those of you who don't know me, I am Sarah Kenny, the, as Susan said, the um, PTA liaison on the board. And I currently have four children enrolled in the Bronxville School. We wanna welcome all our new families um, who are attending this meeting tonight. Um, the board, we just like you to know, the board has monthly meetings. And in fact, there's one tomorrow night. Um, they are public, they're in our auditorium uh, lobby. We encourage everyone to attend to get a more in-depth view of some of the bigger issues going on in the school. And we also welcome and value any feedback that you may have. Um, tomorrow's agenda is going to go through class size and enrollment. Um, we're going to have a strategy and curriculum update, a financial report. We're going to have a facilities update, which is going to go through. Um, we plan on um, voting on the first outdoor classroom, which is going to be very exciting. So we're hoping that gets voted through and work will begin shortly. And this year, our kids will have a new outdoor classroom, which is very exciting, thanks to the foundation and the PTA's um, donations. And finally, we'll have some committee reports. Um, our next meeting will be October 19th, and um, the board is comprised of seven members, and we are all welcome and um, for your feedback, your emails, your phone calls, um, anytime you have something uh, that you'd like to share with us. So thank you and looking forward to the school year. Thanks, Sarah. We're excited about that outdoor classroom. That's exciting, so good luck. <laughs> um, next up is our literacy program. Dr. Maura Ketke is here to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much for having me tonight. It's a pleasure to be here, and I am pleased to talk about our literacy program um, with you. I also recently sent out a frequently asked questions document to our kindergarten through third grade families through Infinite Campus. Uh, which goes into greater detail. It's about four to five pages long, I believe. Uh, and it is available on the website for fourth and fifth grade families if they are interested. Um, but tonight I'm happy to share a few details from that frequently asked questions about our literacy program document. So when you think about the components of a strong literacy program, you, you generally think about five things. One is phonemic awareness which is the ability to identify and isolate sounds. So for example, the word cat, it has three sounds, k, a, t. Phonics, the sounds that individual letters and letter combinations make. Fluency, reading accurately and at a good pace and with proper expression. Building strong vocabulary. And of course, comprehension skills, understanding what you're reading. So I'd like to address the phonics first. Um, some of the criticism of the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project has been uh, due to its lack of attention to phonics. And I just wanna be very clear here that Bronxville has had a strong phonics component in its literacy program as far back as 1995, as can be uh, confirmed by Dr. Rachel Kelly, who was here then, and to, up to the present day. Uh, this is before and during our work with the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project. Our phonics instruction is research-based, follows a sequence, is multi-sensory, and provides explicit instruction. However, 
going back to the five pillars I mentioned, phonics alone would not prepare our students for New York State tests beginning in third grade, where students are required to comprehend and write short responses as well as essays. And this is where the Readers and Writers Workshop from the units of study developed by Teachers College come into focus and round out our literacy instruction. To give you some examples, in Readers Workshop in grade two, students are taught comprehension strategies such as how to retell the story, including the problem and its solution, discover what lessons a character learns, the importance of rereading when you don't understand, stopping to jot to track the character and the problems they are experiencing, and fluency strategies such as scooping up words into phrases and noting punctuation when reading. In writer's workshop is just one example. Students beginning in third grade participate in a baby lit essay unit where they choose a character from the story, create a thesis or claim statement that includes a character characteristic to describe the character. They find evidence from the text to support their thesis claim. They learn the structure and they write an essay. These are all additional components necessary for a well-rounded literacy curriculum. The units of study from TC have been very good for us in terms of New York State test scores. When we began that work in 2014, approximately 70% of our students in grades three through eight were proficient in ELA. In the last several years, approximately 85% of our students are proficient, showing growth in the population. We see every reason to continue with the units of study in reading and writing and the workshop model, along with a strong phonics program. Kindergarten phonics assessments look strong at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. The phonics program will stay the same in kindergarten. In first and second grade, we will devote a little more time to phonics by increasing time teaching those skills and slowing down the curriculum to one phonics skill per week, as opposed to multiple skills, which had been taught weekly in past years. Third and fourth grade continue with a words their way curriculum that supports students in spelling and is highly differentiated. All grades utilize small group instruction when students have not mastered a particular skill and this differentiation is commonplace in the elementary school. And we continue to have strong interventions, including skills support for students who are having difficulty after in-class interventions have been exhausted. We are very proud and committed to the work we have done around literacy. Our teachers are very experienced in this area. The focus is not over the reliance on one program over another, but on giving our students what they need to be successful readers and writers and to love literacy. Thank you for that. Um, we appreciate it so much and hearing all, um, what a great year we're gonna have with all of our st students with the numbers continuing to rise. Okay, our next up is our one of our favorite principals, Mrs. Rakia Adams. And she'll introduce our two new staff members. Yes, I will. Anthony, can you share your screen? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm more than pleased to share that this school year is off to a fantastic start. Ice cream social, lightning and all. <laughs> Students have been at work and it's always such a pleasure listen listening to the rich classroom discussions and watching so many mo moments of new learning happening in real time. As part of our school culture, we have monthly themes which closely align with the Bronxville Promise. This month, as you've heard from our student council representatives, our theme is community. The student council has led the big three, where classes have set classroom norms and expectations on the three words that make them a stronger community. Classes are grounding their morning meeting discussions on building a sense of community. For example, in kindergarten, Ms. Murphy's students uh, start the day in a community circle and pass a ball around to share a warm hello to a friend. 
In fourth grade, Mr. Curtis's class has a new way of greeting each other in the morning every week. This week is robotic greetings. I tried getting an understanding of what this was. Students tried to explain it to me. I still don't quite get it. I guess we'll have this. Our first B3 assembly of the year also highlighted our B3 rules of being respectful, responsible, and safe, and how these tenants have a large impact on our learning community. Go back one slide, Anthony. Thanks, just stay there. So design thinking and project-based learning, often referred to as PBLs, continue to be an integral part of our instruction. Project-based learning encourages students to engage in inquiry, explore real-world um, context, and publicly share their learning. Um, it also allows teachers to achieve these goals while still meeting curricular requirements. Kindergarten through fifth grade teacher teams have spent a significant amount of time revising their PBL units and applying them with even more alignment to the Bronxville Promise. For example, the kindergarten team has updated their Everyday Heroes on community and, and community helpers, where kindergarten students conduct research on the various roles of faculty members in our school community. Then they take their findings to collaboratively develop their own classroom jobs, like the nurse buddy, for example, who walks students to the nurse. Um, these interdisciplinary units of study are highly engaging and call upon multiple intelligences. Students learn to develop research questions and analyze data to determine possible solutions. For more on our PBL units, they can be found on the curriculum timelines on the Bronxville School website. Now you can go to the next slide. Thanks. Another integral part of our instructional core is our robust music program. Students in kindergarten through fifth grade are exposed to a wide variety of music and instrumental disciplines. In grades four and five, students select an instrument and have in-school lessons as well as early morning music. Our dedicated music teachers meet with students before the start of school, before the start of the school day at 745 to 825 in order to develop their skill sets as well as learn how to play in an ensemble. Students ultimately prepare for their culminating concerts in the spring. We are very fortunate to have such a wonderful arts program and are very thankful for the support of the PTA Arts Committee, which continues to elevate our programs to higher levels each year. And lastly, we look forward to welcoming everyone next month on Thursday, October 5th for Back to School Night. We hope you all can attend. This is a fabulous opportunity to meet and hear from our classroom teachers, as well as special area teachers, music, science, art, technology, media, as well as from our new K through eighth grade math coach, Ashley Chippa, and our fifth grade guidance counselor, Nelson. I'd like to turn it over to Ashley and Tim to share a bit about themselves and their role in the elementary school. Ashley. Thank you so much, Rakia, and um, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I just, I'm thrilled to be a part of the staff here at Bronxville. It's very clear that it's a special place to be. And everyone has been extremely welcoming and kind as I transition into this role. Um, I've been popping in and out of classrooms from kindergarten to eighth grade to introduce myself to all the students. And I'm just thoroughly impressed with their knowledge. The teachers are phenomenal. It's definitely a, a wonderful place for students to learn and grow. A um, little bit about me. I, um, I've been a regular ed teacher, special ed teacher, second grade, fifth grade, and the last seven years I was a math specialist um, at Nyack Public Schools in the elementary. So I am very excited to extend my role to eighth grade and work with the teachers. I'll be kind of like a consultant, but in the building at their fingertips. And I just am so excited to work with all the students and see everything that's going on, which already I am thoroughly impressed. So Thank you very much. And uh, Tim, take it away. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Tim Nelson. I am the fifth grade school counselor, a new role uh, in the Bronxville schools. Uh, I also work with the ninth graders um, as well. And so far, I, I would Ash, uh, just say exactly what Ashley said in terms of the kindness and just the, the, the um, warm welcome that I have gotten from not only the staff and the parents, but the, the students. Um, I've been in classrooms already doing visits. Um, I'm pretty much at lunch and recess every day. Um, 
talking to kids, throwing the ball around. Um, and that's been really fun so far. Um, I'm excited to get on the fifth grade overnight field trip to Philadelphia um, as a way to get to know them a little bit more. Um, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, and I will be at back to school night and really looking forward to meeting you all there. It's exciting to have y'all here and just all these different layers of educators and administration um, that help our families. So we are very appreciative of everything that the staff is putting towards our students. So thank you. Next up is Deidre Dehaney, and she's here as our PTA executive chair. Hi, yeah. Hi guys. Nice to meet you. I'm Deirdre Dehaney, Um, and I just wanted to hop on really quickly and thank all of you who have joined the PTA this year um, again, and to thank you for supporting us with your time and your donations. Um, as you can see here, the elementary school council has been working so hard already um, alongside the faculty and administration. And there's a lot to look forward to this year from the PTA, particularly in and among the athletic, um, the elementary school council. Um, it's gonna be a great year ahead, but please, please reach out to me or to Susan if you have any issues, complaints, feedback, great ideas, or if you wanna get involved and you just don't know how, please come see us and we are more than happy to fill up your time. So thank you so much. Thank you, Deidre. Yes, we are big believers and many hands make light work. So come on in. <laughs> okay, next is me. Uh, we have several committee members coming, but before they start, I'm just gonna read a little note from the athletic committee. Um, homecoming starts the week of October 2nd. And um, food truck night is scheduled for Thursday, October 5th. And we know that's the same night as the elementary school, back to school, but we have such a busy schedule that we're just trying to get it all in. Um, so just wanted to say that, and the food trucks will start at four on that Thursday. So that's a note from the athletic committee. And I'm just gonna say for Lindsay John Johnson, who's our Basque rep, BASC starts next week. There are still some slots available, so go on the website. And just to note, please, on parent-teacher conference days, BASC will not run. Up next is Cara on our apparel sale. And let me see if I can, may I share a screen, Anthony? Don't worry. It's, if all the um, flyers are in the agenda, so you can just click through you can go back to the agenda and click through where it says information and you'll see all the uh, apparel and everybody else's piece. You should be able to share a screen now if you wanted to, Susan. Okay. All righty. All right, I'll go ahead and start. Um, good evening and thanks for having me, Susan. My name is Kara Kernan. I am the chair of the apparel team and I work with a team of five other talented parents who have been working hard all summer to bring you the newest and coolest Broncos merchandise. Uh, for those families who are new to the school, we have two large in-person sales each year, one in the fall, the week of homecoming, as well as in the spring, the week leading into Memorial Day, where we sell a variety of clothing for all ages, hats, car magnets, water bottles, stadium chairs, blankets, flags. Basically, if you can put a Bronco on it, we try to sell it. Our <laughs> Fall sale is approaching, so please mark your calendars for Tuesday, October 3rd through Friday, October 6th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. We will all, as weather permitting, we will be outside on the front lawn outside of the auditorium stairs. And um, an email went out yesterday with a direct link to membership toolkit, which is where you can sign up to volunteer to work at the sale. Uh, I just checked and as of this evening, there are still plenty of spots available, um, particularly for Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, midday to afternoons. And as a small thank you, all volunteers as well as teachers and faculty do receive a 10% discount and as you can see from our flyer, we have a few new and exciting things, but we have many more things that are not on there. So please be ready to come and shop and we can't wait to see you all. Thank you. Up next is Bold. Is Anne available? Hi everyone. 
Um, Anthony or Susan, are you going to cue the slide? I'm going to try. Okay. <laughs> I will, I will uh, keep things rolling. So bold, the, the first question I guess some of you probably have is what is bold? So bold stands for Bronxville's Organization for Learning Differences. So what do we do? Our goal is to foster inclusion and support all families with children who either have 504 plans, IEPs, or children in the special education classes. Next question is, who can you contact if you have any questions? I am Ann Jenks, one of the elementary school representatives, and I believe Tara, Tara, are you on? Hi. <laughs> and Tara Hart is my uh, co-representative. Um, so if you guys have any questions or you want to get involved, our committee is welcoming new members. Um, we Our motto is kind of the more the merrier. What can you expect from us this year? So in the fall, we are um, going to have a talk slash workshop on executive function. The dates and all that are still being worked out, so we will get back to you. In the spring, we are going to bring back um, Ned Howell. He has a new book out called ADHD Explained. Um, and we're, we've, we've kind of loosely bookmarked him for April, so stay tuned for that. Ned Hallowell is, I think he's on his third or fourth year coming back, and every single year he has something new and interesting to learn. So I highly encourage you to uh, watch that. And then throughout the year, what you can expect for us, from us is Coffee and Connect. So this gives you an opportunity to go to the school, to meet other parents, uh, you know, in a similar situation, as well as to interact with the school administration and really get to know some of the people that work with your children day in and day out. Uh, it was wildly successful last year and we're looking to grow the program this year. And then a new initiative that we're launching that we're all very excited about is Book Club. So we have a slew of books that we have vetted that parents will get together and they will or you will read the book on your own and then we will get together as a discussion group to discuss the book, um, potentially maybe meet some of the authors and just really not only learn from the book's teaching, but also from each other. So we are very busy and we are very excited for the year ahead. Thank and you. We just settled on our first meeting of the book club. We'll be talking about parenting a child with intense emotions and that date will be October 25th invite and all of that is still to come, but we just settled on that today. These are all fabulous. Thank you for all the hard work. So next we have book fair. Our co-chairs are Amy Savali and Amy Howard. Are the Amy's on? I'm here. Uh, my name is Amy Howard. I am chatting um, on behalf of both of us tonight. We have the book fair coming up. We're already working on it. It will uh, be in person the week of Tuesday, November 14th through Friday, November 17th. Students will uh, visit the book fair with their classes and caregivers, parents, grandparents are welcome to come with them. We are also going to open up our book fair to families if we have some working parents that can't come with their child. Um, mornings, uh, two, two mornings, Wednesday morning and Thursday morning from 745 to 830. Um, so hopefully people will take advantage of that. In addition, if you can't visit our book fair in person and if you would like to uh, visit it online. Our website will go live November 1st and it will stay open until the end of November. Um, so if you miss something at the fair and you want to go back on, if people want to do some holiday shopping um, and give back to our school, that would be wonderful. So um, we will be making sure that you are aware of the website and the times and the dates, but um, we've got it all rolling. If you have any questions, please please feel free to reach out. Thank you. There's no doubt those ladies are working hard. Um, next is Be Well. Is our Be Well group on, Rachel or Elizabeth? I'm here. It's Elizabeth. Um, are you going to share your slide? Or oh, not? yeah, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Awesome. Um, we have two events we wanted to update everybody on, and you'll, I think, see them on the slide shortly. Um, the first event we have coming is on October 4th. We're really excited to have Stephen Hill come back. He's a particular request from the high school. He's a really dynamic sobriety speaker. So we're having him come during the day to speak to high school students. But then he's also coming back at seven o'clock at night in our auditorium and also virtually to speak alongside his father. And right now, as you can see, we've marketed it a bit to middle school and high school parents. But I think 
we want to invite everybody to come to this talk because these issues come up sooner than you think. And if you're anything like me, you like to worry about things like several years in advance. So please join us for that. I think it's going to be a terrific event. Our other event I'm super excited about is on November 16th. Jennifer Wallace just wrote this book called Never Enough. Um, and she's going to be speaking to us virtually. If you're on this PTA meeting, you probably read a lot of PTA or a lot of parenting books, and I do too. And this is the best parenting book I've read in like 10 years. And so to have her come and speak to us is such a tremendous opportunity, especially because she writes about achievement culture. And I know that she went across the country to interview people, but gosh, do I think she spent a lot of time talking about the things we see in Bronxville. But what I like about her book is it also is full of really useful, tangible tips how to combat this sort of achievement culture and the things it can do to our children. So we hope you can join us for that as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really excited about these two speakers. Yeah, and Especially Susan with was helpful bringing them, so thank you. Oh, well, Emily Stone is the parent that introduced us to Jennifer Wallace, so. Thank you. Yes, we're excited. Okay, up next is Picture Day. Denise, are you on? Picture day, picture day. Well, it's coming. Here, it's I'm here. Oh, Sorry, perfect. I'm just multitasking, driving a carpool, making dinner. Anyway, um, so picture day. It's time to book those haircuts. We have picture day coming up on October uh, 17th and 18th. You will receive um, an email with the schedule in, um, in a few weeks, and that will tell you what day your child's class has picture day. Um, don't worry if you have, you know, your pictures after lunch or recess or PE, the committee will be there. We'll have combs for every child, <laughs> wipes, and we'll have them tuck in and, you know, get them ready to have a great picture. Um, the background for the pictures will be blue, royal blue. So, uh, any color, but blue works great. Um, you know, the pictures might show your child's shoes and pants or bottoms. So, you know, dress them as, as if, you know, you'll see their whole outfit. And um, the pictures will be um, like standing active poses. We found that these work really well with younger children. Um, and the pictures will go in the yearbook and you will have the opportunity to purchase them if you wish. You'll get the proof. Um, probably by email and hopefully hard copy too. And that's about it. Thank you. Well, that was our meeting. It's really exciting. All of the different staff and administration coming on. Thank you to all of our hard volunteers that are working, to all of our volunteers that are working hard. We are appreciative. There's no way we can get through all of this without all the parents leaning in as well as our wonderful staff. So thank you. Are there any questions for anyone? And then we will wrap it right up. Okay, have a great night. It's, it's a great start to the new year. We're excited. We're here to serve you and we appreciate it. Thanks everyone. Uh, uh, I just gonna, sorry, oh. DEI committee. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm representing the DEI committee. Oh, gosh, excuse me. That's my fault. <laughs> I apologize for that. Yes, and you have a beautiful event coming up. My apologies. <laughs> no worry, no worry. Thank you for speaking up. I am sorry for that. No worry. Um, well, I would like to take a second to welcome all the new members of our community. I think it's important for them to, to feel that uh, we're here and uh, for them to support them. So I'm representing, uh, belong with Tatiana, which is not here today, uh, the DEI committee for uh, the elementary school. So I'm going to present the committee to those who don't know about it. Um, I don't have the slides, we came uh, a bit last minute. Well, the mission of the DEI committee is to encourage an environment amongst the school community where members from diverse backgrounds based on race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, ethnicity, nationality, social, socioeconomic status, abilities, disabilities, um, or age feel seen, heard, empowered, and therefore that they belong to our community. We strive to meet our commitment by sharing, listening, learning, and applying these ideas to the school community. 
the committees, uh, the committee offers opportunity for students and parents to share, explore, learn, recognize, and celebrate the diversity within our own community. The DEI committee is very careful about, quote, how we talk to our kids, what to share with our kids, and how, at what age, and how to keep the meaningful conversation going on with kids and parents. We hope everyone will always feel welcome in our, in our committee. Uh, we're trying to, to talk and listen to each of us, um, each of you and everyone. I mean, um, and uh, throughout as well, all our events, which our first one is very close. It's on October 1st. You should have received uh, information. I mean, if you join the uh, PTA membership, um, it's the Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, uh, what better way to kick off the homecoming than going to a dance party on Sunday evening? So food gonna be served, salsa, merengue, cha cha is gonna be on the floor, uh, and we hope to see many of you. And then we're gonna have a few other events. Uh, October 11th is gonna be our meet and greet, and many other where we're gonna talk about different topics such as Black History uh, Month, Disabilities Awareness, Women's History Month and our bigger events, which is at the end of April, the International Fair presenting all the diverse um, countries we presented into our school. So um, thank you for your time. And if you need to reach us, I'm like very old style. I don't know if it's in the right way. It's the DEI at bronxvilleschool.org. No, it's coming bad, right? Or oh, Bronxville DEI. For the Instagram, <laughs> sorry, I'm very outside, but I hope uh, I reach each out of, uh, of yours. Thank you so much. And my sincerest apologies for that oversight. Your committee is very important. And there's no doubt I'm very excited about the October 1st, 5 to 8 at the Bronxville Women's Club, uh, where you will have all the wonderful dance and food um, for your first event. So thank you for being gracious to me. I appreciate that. Is there anything, and, and your information is linked on the agenda. So if anybody wants to follow along, um, all the committee is linked to the agenda. Anyone else? Did I forget anyone? <laughs> okay, thanks for a great night. We got through that in 43 minutes, so I appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Thank you, good night. Thank you.